So while waiting for the uh, new carriage to arrive, I've been looking at all the other bits and pieces that need to get done. And one of them is uh, cables for stepper motors. So uh, the stepper motors you buy from Prusa have the cables all measured to length and hardwired in at the motor end. Uh, so you don't have to worry, but obviously the generic ones uh, come with a, uh, a plug in a socket thing. Um, so the the ones that came with the motors seem just a little bit flimsy uh, and of course uh, in at least one or two cases were not long enough. Um, so I went and bought some generic stepper motor cables from a local 3D print supplier um, which has got beefier cable uh, in it uh, but they're like a meter long and so I cut down each of the cables, so I had the four cables I need at roughly the right length um, because the way my controller mounts on the frame I gotta write the cable slightly differently than it says in the in the manual and so uh, that's that done uh, the only thing I have to be a little bit careful of is these generic ones don't come with a key on them to get, make sure you put them in the right way around so uh, once I've figured out which way around they go I'll have to mark them so that I make sure they all go in the right way. I had to make some mods to the uh, Y-axis uh, belt setup. Very difficult to show you on the actual thing itself, on the frame itself, so I'm gonna try with a drawing. So this is the carriage cross section here which goes back and forth with the bed on it. This is a little plastic bracket that is used to fix the belts. And the belts go around the pulley at the front and around this, uh, another pulley on the stepper motor at the back. Um, the problem for me was the center line of the pulley here and the center line of the pulley here were not aligned. So this is higher up than this. This pulley is bigger in diameter than this pulley here. Plus my bed is about a centimeter higher because of the bearings that I'm using. So when you put it all together, the belt is tracking really badly. So it's rising up from back to front. It's not too bad on the top here, but then when you get, especially when you get real close to the stepper motor, this and this angle of the belt is really, really steep. And so there's not many teeth being held here and it's pulling the motor up, obviously. Um, really didn't like that. I'm not comfortable with that at all. Uh, so what I did was I re-drilled a hole in the front bracket a little bit lower down. I fitted a pulley that's about the right same size as the pulley on the stepper motor and then I made a spacer to go underneath the carriage to drop this uh, little clamp lower down so that now the belt is pretty much tracking parallel um, along the way. So I'm much more comfortable with this as a setup and uh, hopefully all will be well when we come to test it in anger. Other little learnings along the way, this is the controller board. And so the easy one is I discovered that instead of just a single pair of wires carrying the 24 volts from the power supply, they actually run two pairs of wires uh, with a separate pair just for the bed. So this is 24 volts in for the bed and that's the out to the bed. And this is 24 volts for the rest of the circuitry. And that's cool, no problem with that. However, the new thing that I hadn't seen before is this little guy here called Power Panic. So I had to go look that up. What the hell is that? Because my generic 24 volt power supply uh, doesn't have this feature. Essentially what it is, is a facility that if there's a sudden loss of AC power while you're in the middle of a print, um, it will save all its current state, um, as I understand it, in the EEPROM in here. So that when you read power is restored, you can just you have an option to just carry on from where you left off. Uh, I have no idea how well that works. <laughs> However, my main interest is that when I power this thing up, that whatever INC needs to see here, that they can see it. So um, I found out that you can get a little gadget, which you add to your power supply, and. Um, it will uh, provide that function. So the, you have the line coming in here 
and you have a little diode and a cap and stuff and then opto isolated whatever and then you get a little signal out here um, when uh, when there's a sudden loss of AC power so <coughs> when that arrives from the Aurora eBay bay um, I'll have to figure out how I can fit it into my power supply uh, and we'll figure all that out on when the time comes other slight modifications um, the cable from the uh, x-axis motor according to the official plan there's a hole here at the back of the controller housing and you route the cable in here and up to here and then you plug it in up here um, that's not going to work for me because between the back of this controller and the stepper motor when it comes down there just isn't enough clearance and so I cut a little hole here on the top side on the right and we will run the cable from its plug over here out here and up to the motor so that should work okay hey guys um it's been a little while since my last update uh and the reason uh, will become clear um so when i discovered that the carriage that i had on my orbello frame was not compatible with the 24 volt hotbed from prusa um i saw that on the orbello website they had a, another carriage which uh, it said is fully compatible with the mark 3 um, so I ordered it up um, then I got a note and so I will say that Arbella has been more responsive and uh, definitely trying harder since the, since the last time so I'll give them credit so I got a response from Arbella saying uh, the carriage that I'd ordered is not really compatible with the frame that I have already and there's an upgrade kit to the frame um, to make it compatible with the new carriage and so I thought you know just far down a hole let's just keep going so I, I said okay add the um, the upgrade kit to the order um, then a couple of days later they came back to me and said actually we have a new kit now which we're calling the V4 uh, which is uh, the frame upgrade and the carriage included and so that's probably better for what you're trying to do and do you want us to switch the order to the new to the new version 4 frame upgrade and I thought <coughs> if you have it in stock if you can ship it quicker than the other one then yes otherwise leave it as it is so they said yep we can ship it and so that was last Friday today is th they shipped it last Friday today's Thursday and it arrived so let us see what is in here well I guess first of all I'd say wow what I was expecting was an upgrade kit. Here is the new carriage. Uh, and as you can see, it's not square. It's very rectangular. So we can ostensibly do the 200 by 200 and the 200 by 300 type bed. Um, so all I was expecting to get was this and the, uh, the uprights, these guys at the back and which have the long pieces going out to the front which now looks to be a separate piece it's not one side piece anymore so this is a complete kit this is the whole thing however rather frustratingly there's always a sting in the tail i did ask them to include the the long rods because if this has got a 300 mil long bed uh you need three you need long shafts for the bearings to run on and uh, I did ask them to include those and uh, they're not in the packet so I shall have to let them know uh, so I got it I, got, <laughs> I mean this is way over the top because this is not what I was expecting um, it's way more than I was expecting um, except for the rods <laughs> um, and so now I have to think do I start all over from scratch um, because if I if this if the spacing between the rods is the same as before, then this should fit on my existing frame, albeit it'll stick out at the front or the back or whatever. So the first thing to find out is I'm gonna put all this away and I'm gonna see if a 24 volt bed will mount on this properly. 
If it does, we will go from there. Well guys, the frustration continues. Um, before going anywhere else, I figured I need to make sure that this uh, carriage will fit uh, onto the Mark III bed. Um, and so I just put four longer M3s into the bed here, went to line it up. So I put two holes, uh, the, everything lines up on one side. But on the other side, we get this. So, what this says to me is the holes on this carriage are compatible with a Mark II. They are not compatible with a Mark III because you would need a separate set of holes uh, slightly wider apart. So this looks like a bust. So it looks like this particular project is going to be back on the shelf and uh, might be a while before we get before we get back to it. <laughs> boy oh boy oh boy. I have discovered why this carriage is not compatible with the original frame. The main reason is the distance between these bearings is much greater on this carriage. So they're much further apart and so if you put them in the shorter at the 200 by 200 frame you have much less travel before the bearings hit the buffers at each end okay after much reflection i've decided the uh, fastest way forward for me at this point is to take the existing original carriage modify it myself so it'll take the mark three bed well, the actual hotbed itself was driving me nuts with all those uh, neodymium magnets. Uh, all my tools are getting magnetized. <laughs> and it's such a, a bugger to work with that uh, I thought I'd damage it along the way. So I thought, let's make a little template that's non-magnetic. And we'll work with that. And then when we have everything sorted out, we'll go back to the actual bed. Well, guys, I came up with various ways of... Uh, modifying the existing carriage to add these little extension pieces so the hole spacings and all would be correct and they were all kludgy whatever way I came up with it there'd be no guarantee of rigidity and all which is obviously important so I figured I'm avoiding the inevitable which is I gotta make a new carriage if you want a carriage that will accept a 24 volt Prusa Mark III bed and has facility for four uh, bearings you all going to have to make it yourself uh, so this is my first attempt which I've uh, so obviously I have to make uh, the image and then convert to a model and da, da, da. and so I'll do it in aluminium uh, because my little CNC will not route steel uh, not uh, cut steel um, so I figured this is three mil steel if I go four mil aluminium it should be rigid enough and I'll you know I've weighed this one so I'll compare the weights um, and so I'm creating my model which I did very late last night um, this is sort of my first attempt at a full-scale printout of it and uh, I screwed up because these little additional lugs instead of coming down should be going out <laughs> so I gotta go back to the drawing board and tweak that a little bit and then see how we go so the plan here is I will Hopefully get a suitable model that I can then get into the uh, X-Carve and I'll do a dummy run with um, obviously with plywood and if that lines up with the bed and everything else looks good then we'll have a go at doing it on uh, some aluminium which I haven't cut on the X-Carve before but there's plenty of video folks doing it so it's doable. So this is probably going to take a while guys no idea when the next one will come an update on this will come but at least I've uh, knuckled down to <laughs> come up with a plan that should finally yield a result that uh, I can live with.